and brands are very unique. They have very complex personalities. There's several key branding elements. The brand name, the logo, the symbol, the tagline, and the slogan. The tagline and the slogan are not the same. Packaging is also a good example of a branding element. Why do I say the tagline and the slogan are not the same? Because the tagline is what, it's a short phrase, usually very short, no more than three or four words, that's associated with the logo and the symbol. Right, well that for Nike has an interesting history, but we'll come back that, to that in a second. The slogan is simply the theme for an advertising campaign. And that could change. <laughs> That's it, huh? That's it. All right, feel, feel well. Thanks. We'll see you. The, the slogan is the advertising theme for a campaign, which can change every three to six months. Because consumers get tired of seeing the same commercials again and again and again. Right? They, some of them even become annoying. Right? But... The, um, the, the tagline is something that's more enduring. Once you come up with that short series of words that embodies your brand, then you stay with that, unless you want to reposition your brand. So that's something that you wouldn't change um, more than every five years. Or maybe you would want to keep the same tagline for 10 years or 20 years, as long as it still represents and embodies what your brand means or what you want it to mean to your customers. So that's not something that you change every three months. Slogans, remember, those are just the themes for ad campaigns. Those you change. Because every ad campaign, you want to show a different dimension of your brand, a different facet of your brand and your products. So that could change, but not, not the tagline. Often people get a little um, unclear as to the distinction of the two. They're, they're not the same. Now there's four key branding elements. So when we're def defining, when we're deciding what the brand name is going to be, what the logo is going to be, what the tagline is going to be, the slogan, we have to use certain criteria to determine whether or not it's an effective brand name, or if it's an effective logo or symbol. So these are some key brand um, criteria. The first is the branding element has got to be memorable, which means that it's got to be unique. And it's unique enough that people are going to remember it, or that they're going to recognize it when they see it. Because one of the things that we want to achieve is a high level of brand awareness. But there's two types of brand awareness, brand recognition and brand recall. Brand recognition means that you recognize the logo and the symbol when you see it usually at the point of purchase, in the store, on the shelf. But that's different from brand recall. Brand recall means that you're able to retrieve from your memory the brand name. So when you go down the road there to Applebee's and you say um, you'd like to place your order, and they say, okay, what would you like to drink? There's, they're not holding up any kind of flashcards or anything. Pepsi, Sierra Mist, right? You're there, you have to retrieve that from your memory. You go, uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever, what? They say, uh, no, we don't, oh, I'm not familiar with that brand. Fanta. So what are some brands? Let, let's talk about um, beverages. Let's go around the room and I want you to tell me some, some brand names for, for beverages. Who, who's going to start? Go ahead. Yes? Okay. Andre? Some kiss. This like Friday evening and Monday. No, that's this whole I I know. That's awesome that you remember that. <laughs> Smart 
Yeah. <laughs> Who's their uh, spokesperson? Peanut. Yep. Who, 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 who? Uh, vodka. You know what vodka is, right? <laughs> the students consume alcohol? No. <laughs> not not here, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only soft drinks, right? Fanta. Fanta. Mm, yum. Snapples. Snapple. I never got the nasty part. Like, how do you, like, nasty? You know? <laughs> like, how do you name it? Nasty. It's nasty, you know? Oh, is that one? Yeah, it's produced by uh, Nestle, so they formed that conjugation. It's tea, so it's nasty. Yeah, brilliant, right? But this is the thing. When it comes to determining a brand name, it's not so important to pick a brand name that has some sort of subliminal or implied meaning. That's not going to get you very far. It's cute. It's interesting if you come up with something, a brand name that's a little catchy or implies something. But the only way that you're going to have a meaningful impact in building your brand and creating associations is through advertising. It's not by some cutesy little brand name or term that you come up for as your brand name that's going to give you forward momentum, that's going to make you successful, that's going to um, allow you to sell a large number of units. It's the associations that you build with that brand name. Like, for example, what, is, um, what does Mercedes-Benz mean? Like, there's nothing implied there. As far as I know, it doesn't, it's like, doesn't translate to something that means fast or high performance or anything to even do with cars at all. But the reason why, to all of us here, even for those of us who are not car enthusiasts, why it means something is because they spend billions of dollars in communicating that Mercedes is a high-end luxury car. Some companies, they spend an enormous amount of time trying to come up with a brand name. <coughs> I'm not familiar with that one. <laughs> For example, there's a video segment that we could watch about a censure. Oh, gosh. A what? <laughs> it's a consultant firm at Censure. They had Tiger Woods as their spokesperson. Yeah, Censure, they, um, they spend an enormous amount of time coming up with thousands of brand name alternatives which really is not productive. Most people, even if you're like a, you know, uh, an English major or you know, spelling bee guru or what have you, most people don't know that what a censure means. Like it... <laughs> Isn't there slogan, innovative thinking? Yeah, but the censure has something to do with um, Excellence and accentuating your business and making it go for it. Yeah, because my job here is eccentric consultants. <laughs> but that doesn't um, that doesn't help them. What helps them is those campaigns, like you're saying, and those um, slogans that they use in advertising about innovative thinking and so forth. That's what gives the brand value. That's what gives the brand an identity, not like. Um, the fact that the brand name has some sort of implied meaning. People don't, people don't shop like that. Business people or consumers. No, but if you're a senior executive, you're not going to say, I wonder what that means. Let me Google this. Let me go onto some online thesaurus or something and figure out, oh, Accenture, oh, that's deep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but they actually, they spent, they had a contest in their organization they actually, what's interesting is they hired a very well-known branding company to come up with brand names, but they also ran a contest in the 